And as you think about that, take a quick look at these images that I bring up. Anybody recognize this last picture here? Yeah. Who said, yeah? Did you, George? Do you, do, you, do you know what that? I don't do you remember the story. She what, what do you remember about that? Um, she actually had fallen. I think she hurt herself running her face, and they actually carried her around the basis that the actual competitors did. Okay, so this girl injured herself yeah. trying to go. She hit a home run. Right. She hit a ball over the fence. Um, she injured, she blew out her knee or something like that. Hey, Ray, fill in the blanks for us. You know that one. Yeah, she hit, she hit a home run as she was rounding first. She blew out her knee, tore her ACL. Softball rules say teammates and coaches can't touch her and help her. And while they were discussing the rule and she was rolling around in pain, the first baseman on the other team asked, well, can we help her? And so got the shortstop, and the first baseman, the shortstop of the opposing team, carried her around the bases and let her touch each base so that she would get her home run. And put them two more runs behind than they already were. So it gave up two runs. I'm not sure who ended up winning or losing the game. Okay, so the girl, the girl in the white uniform who went up to the umpire and asked, hey, can we carry her around the bases? Her name is Mallory. Her name is Mallory. And uh, uh, this incident has been referred to um, publicly and in the media as, as the Mallory moment. And uh, it, it clearly touched a lot of people. And ESPN, with their ESPY awards, they gave a special award um, to Mallory and in, 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 in pointing out and, and singling out this special event. So, so why why did it touch people so so much, and, and why why did it, ESPN decide to make a special award for it? Well, why was it such a big deal? Basically, spit in the face of the win at all costs. What else? Well, that's the way life should be. What's, that's the way life should be. It's the way life yeah. should be. Okay. Yeah, I, I jotted down a couple of notes, and, and I agree. I think what I'm going to say here is very much in line with what you're saying. The, this, this moment was a model of exemplary sportsmanship. It reminds us how sports can reveal and even build great character. It's a prime example of what PCA calls honoring the game, which goes even beyond sportsmanship, being a good sport. So, previously I, I, I asked you to think about the time when competition brought out the worst in you and, and the best in you. Clearly, competition can bring out some good things. So it's not competition that's, that's the problem in sports. Competition is a good part of sports. What's the villain? It, it, it's the win at all cost mentality. Okay. Um, why does win at all? Why do we have win at all cost in these sports? Well, we get it's we it starts in in, in professional sports, um, which is about winning. PCA doesn't argue that pro sports is about winning. It's it's a business. It's about making money, and the way you make money is you win. So. It starts up there, but, but the thing is, youth sports is, is, is fundamentally different. Okay? We're not an entertainment business. We're not about making money. So clearly, we have to be different than that win-at-all-cost mentality. At PCA, we think that part of our job as coaches is to inspire our athletes to live up to their best and to help our athletes uh, discover uh, some of that greatness inside of them, the mallory that they have inside of them. And, and quite honestly, we think that is, if, if you keep coaching, or if you're a player and you keep playing, eventually you're going to have an opportunity like this. You're going to get into a situation where you're going you're gonna to have the chance to, to do something like uh, what Mallory did. And, and we challenge you uh, 
to respond the way, the Mallory, the way Mallory did. And we think if people, if, if you all and your, your fellow coaches around the country will respond that way, you sports will be a lot, a lot better. So we're going to take a little time here to talk about the third principle. First two principles, what was the first one? Okay, we've got double goal coach, winning, teaching life lessons. There's three principles. The first one we talked about is the elm tree of mastery. The second one we talked about is the emotional tank. And so the third one is honoring the game. So one of the things we have the opportunity to do as coaches is build our own team culture. You're going to have a culture on your team. Your organization is going to have a culture. It's just a question of whether it's going to be the kind of culture you want. If we think that if you don't shape your team's culture, you will end up with a win-at-all-cost culture because we're bombar our kids are bombarded with that. We're bombarded with it. So we think it's very important that coaches deliberately do things to build an honoring the game culture. And by the way, we think this is a great thing a great um, definition of culture. It, it's, it's not only a good definition for us adults, but it's one that kids can also understand and get their hands around. Culture is simply the way we do things here. So honoring the game has, has to do with respect for five key areas. Respect for the roots, starting with the R, rules, honoring the letter and the spirit of the rule. Refusing to bend the rules in order to win. Respect for our opponents and understanding that our opponents, rather than, some, some, uh, rather than something to be hated, is, is something to be appreciated. Our opponents are actually a gift that help bring out the best in us. Respect for officials. Understanding that we can't play a competitive sport without officials. Well, I guess you can in certain sports. It would be tough to do soccer without the officials. Um, but the officials are part of what makes sports fun. And, um, and, and remember that officials, just like us, are human. And what do human beings do? What, what's one of the things we all have in common as human beings? Mistakes. Make mistakes. Um, respect for our teammates. And understanding the concept of never doing anything that would embarrass our teammates in the gym or, or outside of the gym. And lastly, respect for yourself. And the key in showing respect for yourself is that you live up to your own standards even if others don't. So if at, if at Saddleback United, if we decide that honoring the game is the way we're going to do things here, it doesn't matter what that club does or that club does or that club does. Okay? They're, they're, they're responsible for their culture, and hopefully they'll learn from the good modeling we do. But we don't deviate from honoring the game just because the team on the other side of the field is doing it differently. Okay, here's a, another scenario for you all to think about. Um, so you're going to be looking now at the Honor the Game tools, pages 46 through 51. And here's the situation. In a crucial situation near the end of a close playoff game, the official makes a call against your team that appears wrong, you feel outraged. So, um, this time, uh, this time I, I'm going to ask you to have this conversation with your partner standing up. You've been sitting a long time. So let's actually get up out of our chairs, whether you talk to the same person or someone different. Look at the tools. Decide how, um, what you're going to do to help yourself in this situation, to help yourself respond the way you want to. Any questions for me? And again, I'm going to stand up and switch partners. <laughs>